St. Damien Hospital, which is a hospital for children, the only one in Port-au-Prince, probably the only one in Haiti, the only hospital for children, named for Damien the leper, because when we first came here, if you remember, outside of Sub-Saharan Africa, the real scourge for AIDS was here in Haiti, and it was kind of like a new leprosy. There are 50 maternity beds, 20 neonatology beds, 10 cancer beds, 30 emergency beds, 10 intensive care beds, 60 general pediatric beds. So it's probably about 150 beds. I think the work we are doing here is a kind of a social justice. In my neighborhood, if they are digital sick, when they have no place to go, we can talk about justice. So we will be able to talk about justice. When my child is sick, I can take my child to the most expensive doctor and my servant or my gardener or anyone in my neighborhood, if their child is sick, they can bring that child to this hospital. That, that's what we call a social justice. It's really quite a structure. It withstood the earthquake. It's made with bare hands. Not one piece of machinery went, was used in building this place. And the first thing built was the chapel. And uh, we raised it, we mounded it up so that it would be prominent when you come in, because the hospital would dwarf it. Anything we built in Haiti survived the earthquake. Anything we contracted to have built didn't. 80 meters by 40 meters is a pretty good size for a hospital. I paced down 80 and I paced over 40. And we wanted kind of like monastic style, you know, with open courtyards that could be gardened and an easy, easy flow. And then we pulled in all the, all the practitioners the laundry people, the cooks, the pharmacy people, the floor washers, the, to say, tell us the best layout. In other words, this is the design, but what goes best where? And I saw Father's passion for healthcare, for helping the cause of children, vulnerable children. That was a, a call for me, so I joined. Since I started as the medical director. So I'm trying with his help, of course, to lead the institution to fulfill its wonderful mission, which is offer quality care with Christ's compassion. To the far left, we made a separate center for outpatient, mostly HIV AIDS, which is a very important center in the country because we, we wrote the book on pediatric HIV here. The well-known Paul Farmer from Harvard wrote the book on adult HIV AIDS and our physicians wrote the book on pediatric HIV AIDS. My specialty is HIV AIDS management and also STD in limited resources country. Firstly, I've been trained in Haiti and then in Paris. None of the pregnant women followed at our program gave birth to infected children. We have a field hospital uh, called St. Luke Hospital which uh, it's an adult equivalent to here. It's guided by physicians at Mayo Clinic by using FaceTime on iPads, and they make frequent visits here. There's also a cholera center there, which is our newest scourge as of four years ago, and there's a, a developing tuberculosis program there. Dionor is the administrator over at the St. Luke hospital, you know, barely out of high school. They run digital CAT scan machines, they run digital x-rays, uh, you know, they know all emergency interventions to stabilize somebody fast until 
until a team can show up that can, can finish the rest. They're the interface with all the Mayo Clinic people. And he, he, grew, he grew up in our program, as did so many others. They can really get somewhere. You have to get a good heart to do it, a good, good, good heart to do that job. I passed like seven, seven years with working with Father Eric. The reason I like it is an American is from another country, so he came in my country to help my, like my brother, my sister, so I have to take care of that. I have to take him, I have to say, you do a good job, Farek, because it's my job to do. In a, a very poor area called Wharf Jeremy, we have a general clinic. And in a, a very poor and also very rough area called City Soleil, we have another field hospital. stay around long enough, two things are bound to happen. One, you'll deliver a baby right within 20 feet of this office. And secondly, you'll be coming in contact with a lot of dead brothers and sisters. Morbid until you get used to it, and when you get used to it, it's just very natural. <laughs> This is the general hospital, the city hospital, the university hospital, all one thing. And we're where the uh, destitute dead are piled up. And we'll probably take about 40 or 50 of them in order to bury them in a, in a potter's field, really, out by the sea. On a souhaité pour cette équipe passionniste qui a établi une mission ensemble avec Père Fréchette. The Archbishop was saying that he's uh, really grateful for the activity of the Passionist through myself, through the presence of myself for all of these years. And he would really like to see that enlarge and continue and uh, hopes that the Passionist would consider grounding, uh, having a community here. And he also thanks Father Bob for his visit and said it's an honor to have Bob here in the, in the uh, Archibusche, in the Chancery. And that he hopes that the Passionists who see this film might say, what a great idea, let's make a community in Haiti. <laughs>
production center which makes what missionaries need and what makes what we need and is a way of trying to bring income into our own program so that we're 30 percent at least self-sufficient from within the country. We call it Francisville. Right now as I speak there's a, an artist here painting an image in a grotto that we made just inside the door and she's re copying the image of St. Francis in the cave of St. Benedict at Subiaco. We have our ducks <laughs> and our chickens and uh, pretty soon rabbits and all our bananas under cultivation and our 12,000 tilapia. It started, I think, a year ago with a small tank down there and seeing the success of it, Father Rick decided to expand it. Every month, 2,000 fish will come in, the fingerlings, and it will take around four months to reach a pound and that's when you start selling them. Because there's a great demand in the market here, that's why he decided to do this, even to give some self-sustainability to the, to the hospital. So the younger generation said to me, the day we opened here, do you see the difference in the pride of the people? Just the influence on their spirit and their pride and everything else coming into this place set off a whole nother thinking in these other young people. I do it because I know God, before God get me there in the orphanage, it's, it's like a chance for me that in Haiti, a lot of people don't get this chance. You know, for me, it's like a big chance. So now, even it's so hard, difficult, I have to do it. You know, it's 27 years in the making. It's organic, faith-based, builds out, responds to the needs as they come and gets blessed or it wouldn't, wouldn't keep working. I could never tell that publicly. <laughs> I'll take a pass on that one, boys and girls. <laughs>